Do you have a new air fryer or an air fryer collecting dust somewhere in your house and you're not quite sure how to use it? Today I am sharing the top 15 air fryer tools that I have consistently used over the last few years and these are tools or accessories that will make a world of difference when using your air fryer. P.S. You might already have some of these in your home. My name is Kathy and I empower air fryer owners to actually use their air fryer. You ready to see it? Let's go. Now I'm not asking you to go out and buy 15 new things to help you with your air frying experience. Pick and choose what's going to work best for you. I'm going to tell you how I use these things. I'm going to start with number 15, which is a good thing to have, but not the most important thing to have. That's number one. So let's start with the least most important things to have. Yeah, we'll do that. Number 15 is a cord organizer. I love having this on the back of my air fryer because it just gives it a nice clean place to wrap up the cord so it's not hanging around and acting all loosey goosey. It just sticks right on the back of your air fryer and it has stays on perfectly. They come in a pack of two, so maybe you will have a coffee machine or a KitchenAid or something else that you can just wrap your cord around. I like this tool and I do highly recommend it, but it's not the most important thing to have. On to number 14. I love having a kitchen scale to weigh my food. Now, you've seen me do this for like pizza dough, but I also love to use it like when I'm measuring out sauces or ketchup or peanut butter, anything that's just sticky and not a lot of fun to put into a measuring cup. I'll just set my dish right on top of the scale and then squeeze in ketchup or honey or whatever it might be and weigh it. This little tool comes in handy with any of your cooking, not just your air frying. Here's a little tip on how to figure out how much things weigh. Let's say the recipe calls for a tablespoon of honey. You can look right here and you'll see that one tablespoon is 21 grams. So then you just weigh out 21 grams of honey. Of course, if you need like four tablespoons, you would just go 21 times four to get the right measurement. It's just a little bit of math. Number 13 is this little bag holder. This is an all around excellent kitchen tool. Perfect if you're making like freezer meals, but when I'm doing marinades and different things like that for my air frying, having this little bag holder stand to hold everything so I don't have to worry about it tipping over and spilling is awesome. Having this plate gripper on hand is super great when I have hot dishes in the air fryer basket and it's a little awkward to use hot pads to take it out, I can just lift out hot bowls and dishes using my plate gripper. Speaking of hot dishes, yes, you can use dishes inside your air fryer as long as they are oven safe. So that excludes anything plastic, don't want plastic to melt, but foil is okay in the air fryer, ceramic or porcelain, silicone, even metal or some glass pans work just great in the air fryer. Now the majority of the recipes that I make don't require a dish but it sure is great to make things like oatmeal. I like to make little rolls or cakes in those ramekins. You can make pasta bakes. Yeah, just throw it in a dish and you can cook it up in the air fryer and that sure beats turning on the oven. Basically anything that will fit inside your air fryer that's oven safe, you can use it. And on to number 10. It's super helpful to have this rack to hold food down. It's so funny because about three years ago, I made a video all about air fryer accessories and I was like, what is the point of this rack? And now I absolutely love it. Because the air fryer is a small enclosed chamber and it's got a powerful fan, sometimes food kind of blows up really close to the burner and burns. So for items like quesadillas or tortilla chips or pizza, anything that's not really weighted down, you can just set this right on top of the food and it keeps it from blowing up close to the burner. This rack is a super helpful accessory. And by the way, I have links to all of these things down in the video description box so you can quickly find them or you can go to airfryertools.com and click on the air fryer accessories button to see all of them listed there too. Number nine, it's one of the most important tools to have. Not the number one important though. It is Dawn Power Wash. Now, of course you can use any liquid soap and warm water to clean your air fryer basket, but I love using this. When I'm done cooking for the day, I wipe out my air fryer basket. I spray some of this on, let it sit for about 10 minutes, wipe again, and then power wash all off, and boom, my air fryer is looking nice and clean. It's definitely a convenience tool, but it's one that I love. Number eight is a soft cloth. Mine is in the hamper because they're all dirty. When you're cleaning your air fryer, you don't want abrasives to rub off that nonstick coating. I have found this beautiful, soft, velvety cloth does such a fantastic job cleaning out my air fryer when I really want to get at that deep clean, but it just kind of picks up grease and particles so well without hurting my air fryer basket. Plus, I absolutely love how it just fits right in the palm of my hand. It absorbs water perfectly. Ah, it's just one of my favorite kitchen tools for sure. Now, you're never going to use your air fryer if you're not sure what to make in your air fryer. So I do recommend getting a cookbook from a reputable 
cookbook author such as me. My cookbook, you can snag it at yummyairfryerecipes.com. There are over 160 recipes in here. It's a nice spiral binding, so it opens up, it lays flat, and about 95% of these recipes have pictures. It's a nice coating on a paper, so if you spill some food, it'll wipe right off, but it's not hard to write on. So if you have notes or little modifications, you can totally write them out in the cookbook. Plus, I have a list of tips and tricks in the front. In the back, I have a super thorough index where I index the recipes by ingredient. There's a gluten-free section. There's a low-carb section. There are pages throughout, so you can write down notes or your own favorite recipes. And all recipes have the temperatures in Fahrenheit and Celsius. We ship this to anywhere in the world, so go ahead and check it out at yummyairfryrecipes.com. There's also a digital ebook version if you would rather have that. And when you get it, the very first recipe I recommend you make is page 83, my personal favorite. The sixth most important thing that I think everyone should have is air fryer parchment paper. Now, over the past few years, I've really been loving this type of parchment paper, and there's a few reasons why. Number one, it makes it really easy to lift food in and out of the air fryer. Number two, it contains the mess so much nicer, so it makes cleanup an absolute breeze. And yes, you can still cook in the air fryer without parchment paper, but I especially love it when I'm doing things with cheese because melted cheese, in the air fryer basket, it's not a joy to clean up. One other option if you don't have this type of parchment paper is you could always make a foil sling when you have food that you need to lift out of the basket easily. I do that like with chocolate chip cookies or baked salmon, I've done that before. So just another alternative to this air fryer parchment paper. The fifth most important air fryer tool I think everybody needs is an air fryer cheat sheet. Now we have created this air fryer cheat sheet that's also like magnet. My fridge is not magnetic, so it comes right here inside the cupboard right above my air fryer. And I actually created these. You can get them at airfryercheatsheet.com. And what's super cool about this is that a couple years ago, we surveyed our audience, that's you, to find out what foods you would want on a cheat sheet. So everything on here was requested by people that actually use their air fryer. I love using this cheat sheet for a few different reasons. For times where my kids are like, mom, how do I do this, blah, blah, blah. I just say, go look on the cheat sheet. So it makes them a lot more independent in the kitchen. I love having this list for frozen foods because a lot of times packaging doesn't tell you about air fryer instructions. It's getting a little better. Yes, it's getting a little better, but not all frozen foods have air fryer instructions. So this is a great cheat sheet for that. This one has all of the fresh foods on there. So I love using it when I'm just making up my own recipes or if I have an oven recipe that I'm adapting for the air fryer, I can come and look like, how long does it take to cook diced potatoes? Or how long does it take to cook asparagus? There's lots of fresh foods here, including baked foods. It's also super handy because it lists the internal temperature that you need to cook food to as well. Everything's right here in one spot. And it's kind of funny, you would think that I would say my cookbook is more important than this, but this is more important than the cookbook because you probably already have recipes that you make. Now, this is the power to learn how to adapt them to work in your air fryer. And guess what? You're gonna cook food so much faster when you do it in the air fryer. Now the fourth most important tool is, guess what? A wooden cutting board. And I actually use this to set my hot air fryer basket right on top of. Now three years ago when I was making air fryer videos, I recommended that you set your air fryer on top of something to protect your counters. But what I found is that that really wasn't necessary for my counters. And the last year and a half, I've had some quartz countertops and the air fryers have sat on top of that with no problem at all. But when I have a hot basket that I'm taking out of the air fryer, I do like to have something to protect my counters. So I'm not putting that hot basket right on top of my counter. I just found that this cute little wood cutting board is super handy because when I'm done with it, it just sits back here for decoration. Now, of course, you'll have to use a wood cutting board. And if you are concerned about your counters, go ahead and buy something heat resistant to put in between your air fryer and your countertop. You do you. All right, we are on to number three. And now in these last few, they are uber important for you in your air frying. And number three is silicone tools. You don't want to use metal, metal forks, but metal spoons and metal tongs. You want to use silicone to protect your air fryer basket. There's no need to scratch it up using metal tools. So a tiny investment into some silicone tools is going to actually save you money in the long run. The second most important tool, can you guess it? Can you guess it? It's an oil sprayer. So yes, air fryers in most cases do need a little bit of oil. Now yes, you can brush oil on the food. You could pour oil on the food and stir it around, but for speed and consistency, I really like this little sprayer. Plus, if you're buying aerosol sprays from the store, go look at the chemicals in there. There's propellants, there's things that are actually gonna do harm not 
only to you, but to your air fryer basket. So this is healthier, it's better for the environment, and it's gonna save you money in the long run. I've tried probably three or four different types of sprays, and this particular spray bottle has been the best for me. So remember, I have this linked down in the description box. Ah, uh, it's time for number one, the most important air fryer tool that you need. But before I tell you, I'm curious, are you feeling a bit overwhelmed with your air fryer, or do you feel like your air fryer food is a little drab and you're ready for it to get to fab? Then I invite you to check out my Air Fryers Unleashed course. Whether you're brand new to the air fryer or you consider yourself a novice, I have eight exclusive air fryer recipes in this course that are very adaptable. You can change them. I show you how you can modify them to work for your family because you're gonna learn some very specific techniques that are gonna totally up-level your air fryer cooking. And before you know it, they're gonna be calling you the air fryer master. Go to empoweredcooks.com to learn more about it or you can click on the link in the description box below. Now let's talk about the number one tool that you need in your toolbox. It is an instant read meat thermometer. This has absolutely changed the way I cook, not only in the air fryer, but when I'm grilling, when I'm cooking things in the oven, even when I'm baking food like brownies in the oven, this thing is so handy. All you need is this and the knowledge of what the internal temperature of the food you're cooking should be. That way you never overcook anything or undercook anything. You've got confidence every single time. Now I told you how on the cheat sheet that I list the recommended internal temperature for all of these foods. If you can't buy that one quite yet, I do have a free version. It doesn't have the cook times and temps on it, but it does have the recommended internal temperatures on it. You can get that at internaltemperaturechart.com and I will send it right to your inbox. By now, you should be feeling super excited about your air fryer. Make sure you're not making these air fryer mistakes. I think you're gonna like this one as well and click right here to check out Air Fryer's Unleashed course. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.